Sheridan from Queensland. We'll talk about the compatibility of the accounts, first part of the <coughs> book series. This is about automatic export generation and non-digital export. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be at this conference. Honored to be giving a talk to like and, and Robert and, and Batman, so I'm going to try for that. <laughs> so this is the first oh, thank you. exact Lagrangian brains in the complement of D. It's a Z-graded A infinity category, and it's linear over some Novikov field, uh, for example, the universal Novikov field of C. Uh, formal sums of uh, Novikov parameter Q, complex coefficients, uh, real powers tending to plus infinity. That's our coefficient field throughout the talk. Mm. And the A infinity structure maps count um, pseudo-holomorphic disks mapping into X. They look like this. They've got a bunch of inputs, boundary punctures, and one output boundary puncture. And we always wait our disk counts by Q to the to some factor having to do with the symplectic area of the disk. And this should be related to the absolute for Kaya category of X. It should be some full subcategory of the absolute for Kaya category. But it's much smaller because this one has all sorts of Lagrangian submanifolds of X, this one only has exact Lagrangians in the complement of the device. So you might expect this to be a very small subcategory, but we'll see uh, it's, natu it's uh, reasonable to expect very often in mirror symmetry situations that, it, that you see everything with this relative here. Another point to make is that you can define this one using essentially classical transversality theory, whereas this one, you need some virtual perturbation theory. Since we need to build various structures on the Fakaya category, it's nice that we don't have to work too hard. We can do it using classical methods. 
Okay, now let's turn to the algebraic geometry side of the model. Y is going to be some connected n-dimensional smooth projective scheme over R, that Novikov field from the previous slide. And it's Kalabi Yau, a bit trivial relative to machine. I guess in this case, R, the R that I wrote was algebraically closed, so we could call this a variety. So we have a, a classical Kadara Spencer map, which takes in the tangent vector on the base, M, uh, and spits out class in H1 of the tangent chief Ty, which is the relative tangent. And we're going to introduce a geometric hypothesis on Y, which is going to turn out to be important. It says that if we apply the Kadara Spencer map to generator of the tangent space of the base, delta D by DQ, take it to the power N, it's non-vanishing where this power is taken with respect to the natural product on tangential cohomology, which is the cohomology of the sheaf of polyvector fields, exterior uh, product of the tangential <coughs> two line. So we shouldn't be uh, too stressed about uh, losing generality by imposing this hypothesis Y is obtained by base change from a family parameterized by uh, the punctured disk. And this family has maximally unipotent monotony around Q equals zero. This is the property of the monotony acting on the cohomology of the fibers Y. Um, then Y is maximally unipotent in this sense. And, and this, is, this is something that should be true for all Y that are going to come up in, in mirror symmetry. So we need this hypothesis to be true for everything to work, but it's always going to be true in cases of mirror symmetry. Okay. And the category we're going to look at on the B model is a DG enhancement, the bounded derived category of coherent sheaves on Y regard any DG category as an A infinity category, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, and now here's the, the statement we're, we're aiming towards. Here's what we're going to declare mirror symmetry, homological mirror symmetry, to mean. Say X, D, and Y are homologically mirror, if there's a quasi-equivalence of R linear A infinity categories between the split closed triangulated envelope chi category and the DG enhancement of DB co of Y. Y is projective, so it's a general argument this, this side is going to already be split closed. You don't need to take its split closure. Um, more generally, you might hope to, to prove a more general statement, which is that X and Y are homologically mirror, which is the same thing that you just look at this absolute Fakaya category that involves all Lagrangians of X. It's technically more difficult to, to get a handle on and to prove this statement. Okay, so now suppose you're trying to prove X and Y are homologically mirror in the sense I just said on the previous slide. I'm going to introduce a hypothesis called core homological mirror symmetry, for want of a better name. And this is something that you might, you know, a stage that you might have got to in trying to prove homological mirror symmetry. It says that you've got a subcategory of the Fukaya category, I mean some bunch of Lagrangians, Subcategory of DB co, a bunch of complexes of coherent sheaves. And in fact, this, these and you've matched these categories up, the quasi equivalent. And also, 
these categories are reasonably big in the sense that the split generates a derived category. And finally, we're going to impose this hypothesis that Y is maximally unipotent, that I said earlier. Um, so note, uh, this hypothesis already implies that the bound derived category of coherent sheaves embeds into the split closed triangulated envelope of the Fakaya category. What it doesn't say is that we couldn't have all sorts of extra Lagrangians floating around in X that we didn't see yet. And the theorem, main theorem, is that if this core homological mirror symmetry is satisfied, then that subcategory, those Lagrangians that we identified, necessarily split generate the whole Fukaya category. And in particular, these guys are homologically mirror. Okay, so you, know, you might have thought when you saw, when you got this far, that, you know, okay, well, I've got a reasonable way, but I've still got to do some work to rule out these extra Lagrangians. But no, here we can reach this point, and then we declare the victory. We've reached the finish line already by this theory. And I should say we expect a similar result to hold for the absolute Fukaya category. So, um, in particular, if you've got a bunch of Lagrangian satisfying core homological mirror symmetry for the relative Fukaya category, they also satisfy it. Their images in the absolute Fukaya category satisfy it. And if we can surmount the te technical difficulties to prove this result, the absolute Fukaya category, then we've also shown they generate all of those random Lagrangians in X. Uh, so this suggests that the absolute Fukaya category is generated gener by finding the main components? Uh, yes. It's on the B side, it is. On Sorry? The, on the B side, they are only finding the main components. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and the main technical tool uh, that goes into the proof of this theorem is Muhammad Abzai's split generation criteria. Um, so let me say, uh, maybe to clarify a bit further about what applications of this theorem would be like. So there are a bunch of examples in the literature where results of the type core homological mirror symmetry being proven. For example, for abelian varieties or uh, non-singular Lagrangian torus vibrations being proved by Kinsevich and Sobelman uh, and also work by Fukaya. Uh, it's also being proved for Columbia hypersurfaces in projector space in the two-dimensional case by Seidel higher dimensional case by myself. And in the case of Gross-Siebert mirror pairs, there's uh, Columbia-Yau Gross-Siebert mirror pairs. Uh, there's a sketch proof of what homological mirror symmetry, uh, core homological mirror symmetry should look like due to upper side for us and Siebert, which appears in this book, Dirichlet Brains and, and Mirror Symmetry. Um, so, so here the this subcategory A that I'm talking about, this collection of Lagrangians, are some section, sections of the Lagrangian torus vibration that are mirror to powers of an ample line bundle on the mirror, which definitely split generate the derived category. But, so actually, in this case, uh, full homological mirror symmetry was proved. It's generation arguments were proved for the Lagrangians constructed. In these two cases, these were really core homological mirror symmetry groups. Found some Lagrangians, <coughs> matched them up with some vector bundles on the mirror. But the result, our main theorem, shows that in fact those 
four homological neurosymmetry proofs extend to homological neurosymmetry proofs. We, we see all the Lagrangians automatically. So, if you're trying to prove something about symplectic topology, like classifying topology of Lagrangian embeddings, if you want to know that you've seen all the Lagrangians, not that you found some nice ones that satisfy mirror symmetry and then you know you could be trying to classify some Lagrangian that just doesn't talk to those guys at all. Okay, so let me introduce the the main players in the proof of this main theorem. First is the closed open string map. It's a homomorphism of graded R algebras from quantum cohomology of X. It's cohomology of X equipped with the quantum cut product to the Hochschild cohomology of the Fukaya category. And this map is defined by counting pseudo-holomorphic disks that look like this. The input is some cycle on gray jewel to a generator of cohomology of X. And we have some boundary conditions corresponding to the Hochschild cocycle, which is the output of the map. So Hochschild cocycle has a bunch of input morphisms, it's input boundary punctures, and one output boundary We also have the open closed string map that maps from the Hochschild homology of the Fukaya category to quantum cohomology for the shift by n. It looks almost the same, except the boundary conditions are now a Hochschild cycle, which means they're all incoming morphisms. And now the output is given by evaluation at this internal mark point, and that gives you a cycle contrary to, to something in quantum cohomology. So what are the important properties of this open-closed map? Firstly, it's a homomorphism of QH modules, where Hochschild homology acquires its QH module structure, its natural module structure over the Hochschild cohomology, together with the map from quantum cohomology to Hochschild cohomology, given by CO. Secondly, using the open closed map, you can define a weak proper Kaladi Yao N structure on the Fukaya category. What that means is that this formula, this map from HHN to the base field R, uh, lifts a perfect pairing on morphism spaces on from KL. And so on from L to K, maps to R, given by this formula, is a non-degenerate pairing. So this is the, the Poincaré duality pairing on the Grangian flow cohomology. These are the two important properties of OC. And this allows us to make sense of the statement that CO and OC are naturally dual maps. So a weak proper Kaladiya structure induces an isomorphism between Hochschild homology and the dual of Hochschild cohomology. We also have an identification between quantum cohomology and its dual Poincaré duality. So that identifies the source of OC with the source of the CO check and the target of OC with the target of CO check and with respect to these identifications these maps coincide. So OC and CO are naturally dual maps. Okay. So now I'm going to introduce a hypothesis there's going to be a chain of equivalent hypotheses, so I'm going to write them on the board so you can keep track of them.
So we call a subcategory A of the Fukaya category non-degenerate. If the open closed map from HH minus N of A to QH naught hits the identity class. Well, QH naught is one dimensional, so that's equivalent to this map being zero. And since OC and CO are dual, that's equivalent to CO being non zero in degree 2n, turns out. That's our second equivalent formulation of the property of non degeneracy. The reason, well, the first reason this is an interesting property that deserves a name is that Abuzaid's split generation criterion says if this subcategory is non degenerate, then it split generates the whole category. So this was proved by Abuzaid in the context of the wrapped category and uh, Dipperitz and I just adapted the proof to, to this setting. But the proof is basically the same. So, we're going to prove our main theorem by showing that core homological mirror symmetry implies that A is non degenerate. So, let me go back to the statement of the main theorem. homological mirror symmetry was about this subcategory A in the Fukaya category, subcategory B in Dini Cove. And the statement was that as soon as we had that, the subcategory A split generates the Fukaya category. So the way we're going to prove that A split generates is by verifying that it's non-degenerate. So that's, uh, that's what we want to prove. Core homological mirror symmetry implies A is non -degenerate. Now, this is also a key ingredient in another theorem, which will be uh, more relevant to Shield Ganatra's talk, which is that if X and Y are homologically mirror, is maximally unipotent, then CO and OC are automatically isomorphisms. So I'll talk about this one towards the end of the talk, uh, if time permits. But for the moment, this is the one I want to focus on, proving that for HMS implies a non degenerate. Okay, so A is non degenerate if and only if. CO is non zero in the top degree. Well, our Kähler form omega is a non degenerate two form. So its top power with respect to cut product is non zero. Hence, its top power with respect to quantum cut product is also non zero, since the leading term of quantum cut product is classical cut product. In particular, quantum cut product uh, to the power n omega generates the one-dimensional graded piece QH2n. So this hypothesis is equivalent
to the non-vanishing of CO of omega to the n. Which, since CO is an algebra homomorphism, is equivalent to the non-vanishing C of omega to the power n. Okay, so now we've reduced to trying to prove that core HMS implies that result instead. So to get there, uh, we're going to first introduce uh, a class called the Kaladin class. Um, for any R linear A infinity category, the structure maps mu star, uh, mu star, and degree two Hochschild cochain, as we'll see. You can take the derivative of the structure maps with respect to the parameter q in our coefficient field. And that's going to be a Hochschild co-cycle, which you can prove by differentiating the A infinity structure maps. So it defines a class in HH2, and that's called the Kaledin class. It was introduced by Kaledin and studied by Kaledin and Luntz to, to study formality in, in families. So, well, not really more generally, we have the categorical Kadara Spencer map, it's really equivalent. I want to use that terminology. That takes in a derivation of the coefficient field R and spits out class in HH2 by applying the derivation to the structure maps mu star. And why are we introducing this class? Because of the following proposition. The closed open map CO sends the Kähler class omega to the categorical Kadara Spencer map applied to derivation Q d by dq. And here's a picture of the proof of this statement. In a simplified setting where the Kähler class is just simply dual to the divisor d, the left hand side counts curves with an internal marked point constrained to lie on D. That's equivalent to counting curves like this, but weighting them by the intersection number U dot D for the number of possible choices of the internal mark point to take where D hits our curve. And of course, multiplying by U dot D is the same as applying Q D by DQ to Q to the U dot D, which is the weight by which we weight this curve. Okay. So this closed open map plays nicely with the collagen class or categorical Kodara Spencer map. So that means we can make another step. hypothesis that we reduce to is equivalent to the categorical Kadara Spencer map applied to cubic d by dq to the power n being non-vanishing. And now we know we're in business because this is a condition purely about the category A. It doesn't have anything to do with closed open or open closed maps. So we can transfer it over to the other side of mirror symmetry. So if we assume for HMS, A is quasi equivalent to B, which split generates DB co, and in particular is Marita equivalent to it, then this becomes equivalent to the corresponding statement.
in HH HH2 of the Marita equivalent category TV code Y. Okay, so now we're firmly over on the algebraic geometry side of mirror symmetry. So we need to know how to understand this HH2 of our category of coherent sheets. Yes, thank you, HH2N. So what is HH Hochschild <coughs> cohomology of DB code? It's known uh, by the Hochschild Stan Rosenberg isomorphism to be isomorphic to tangential cohomology of Y. Um, Maybe I'll remind you of that notation. It's the cohomology of the sheaf of polygons. <coughs> this isomorphism graded vector spaces is uh, due to many, many authors. First one is Peter Hochschild and Stan Rosenberg in the Fline case, Kristen Harper and Schack more generally, and the equivalence between Hochschild cohomology of the scheme Y and Hochschild cohomology of the category, because due to Toen, Lowen, and Vandenberg. So it's an observation, I, I think. The observation that this map is not actually an algebra isomorphism is, I think it's due to Kinsevich, but certainly the way to correct it is uh, you have to pre-compose this isomorphism with contraction with the square root of the Todd class of Y. Uh, and when you do that, you get an isomorphism of graded R algebras that looks like this. And this was first explained by Kinsevich, proven in this context by Bogrets and Nico Biskerfen, and uh, more generally, like the non Y, it's proven by Kalak, Vandenberg, and Rossi. Okay, so now we know what this actual cohomology looks like. We want to know what this categorical Kadira Spencer applied to Q D by D Q looks like inside it. For that, we recall the classical Kadira Spencer map introduced at the start. Categorical Kadira Spencer map that I introduced for a general category a few slides ago. And the lemma is that these are related exactly as you would expect. If you apply the isomorphism between tangential cohomology and Hochschild cohomology to the classical Kadara Spencer class, you get the categorical Kadara Spencer class or Kaladin class. So, in particular, applying this to QD by the Q, AS cap, QD by the Q, is equal to this. So now we can, well I don't know what to do now, um, maybe I'll try to make this one a bit more visible. So since we've just shown there's an isomorphism between Hochschild cohomology tangential cohomology and we've worked out what 
the categorical Kodaira Spencer map corresponds to and under that isomorphism. Transferring this statement into tangential cohomology via that isomorphism, we end up with this equivalent statement. And this is precisely the definition of maximal unipotence of Y. It's a geometric condition on Y that is satisfied for all varieties Y that appear in mirror symmetry in compact body symmetry. So we're done with the proof of that theorem. Uh, questions? Or, yes? Can you remind me why the isomorphism between A and B preserves the Kodara Spencer, the categorical Kodara This is something one <laughs> needs to prove that, uh, that the categorical Kodara Spencer map is a Morita invariant thing. Um, but it is. If, if you have, if A and B are Morita equivalent A infinity categories over R, then their Hochschild cohomology is uh, isomorphic. Hochschild cohomology is a Morita invariant category. And you need to do a further argument to show that this categorical Kodaira Spence map is also Morita Morita invariant notion. And it is. But well the proof I know is writing out lots of A infinity equations and checking there's a homotopy between. Okay. So we have time to uh, Maybe, okay, maybe a summary of the, the broad, the whole big scale structure of the proof might be helpful. Um, we have homomorphisms of graded algebras. These ones are all known to be isomorphisms. This one is just the closed open map that we don't know anything about to start off with. And we've also checked that these Algebra homomorphisms send classical Kodaira Spencer to categorical Kodaira Spencer, which is a Morita invariant of what I was just saying. So that gets matched up here. And this map sends the Kala class to categorical Kodaira Spencer. In particular, since these are all algebra homomorphisms, they send the nth powers of all these classes to each other. Maximal unipotence means this nth power is non-zero, which means this nth power is non-zero, which means this nth power is non-zero, which means this map is non-zero, which is this formulation of non-determinants. Okay. Now I want to move on and present proof that when X and Y are homologically mirror, and Y is maximally unipotent, both CO and OC are automatically isomorphisms. And this is going to be crucial in Shield's talk about extracting from a Witten invariance from the Fukaya category, because you need to show that you can recover all of quantum cohomology from the Hochschild invariance of the Fukaya category just some piece of it. So the argument I just gave shows that the Fukaya category is non-degenerate because homological mirror symmetry implies <coughs> core homological mirror symmetry where A is just the whole thing. So everything we just did applies. Furthermore, like I said early on, 
<coughs> open and closed map is a homomorphism of QH modules. It's non-degenerate, which means it hits the identity in QH0, and it follows immediately that it's surjective. So it's observation due to shield. So what remains to be done is to prove injectivity of this open closed map, show it's an isomorphism. And that we're going to do by introducing a new piece of structure uh, called the Mukai pairing. So for any proper uh, linear A infinity category, so proper means the, the cohomological on spaces of finite dimension. The diagonal bimodule defines a functor from C tensor C off to the category of perfect complexes, perfect complexes of R vector spaces, which just means uh, complexes of R vector spaces with finite dimensional cohomology. And on the level of objects, this just sends K tensor L to HOM K L. This induces, this functor induces a map on Hochschild homologies, from Hochschild homology of C, hence the Hochschild homology of C of, Hochschild homology of Earth R, which is just isomorphic to R. And in fact, the opposite category has the same Hochschild homology as the original. So what we've just constructed is a pairing on Hochschild homology, called the Mukai pairing. To note it like that. But this was constructed for DG categories by Schwarov, and uh, of course, the definition for A infinity categories follows immediately since any A infinity category is quasi equivalent to a DG category. However, I don't know if I should claim this lemma, I'm sure it's known to plenty of people, but it turns out that if the morphism <coughs> spaces are finite dimensional, there's a very nice compact formula for the Mukai pairing. And this is what it looks like. You take into Hochschild chains, A0 through AS, D0 and so blah 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 through BT. And you sum over all cyclic permutations of the inputs. AI and BJ, and then you input them into two applications of the A infinity structure maps mu star, such that A naught appears on the left in the first one, B naught appears on the right in the second one, and there's one entry left open. So this defines an endomorphism of the HOM space of this entry left open and you take the trace of that end of it. Sum all these up, and you have a nightmare of, well, by my standard, the nightmare of science, um, but you prove that this is equivalent to the entire theorem. <coughs> and using this formula, you can prove that the open closed map intertwines the Mukai pairing with the intersection pairing on quantum cohomology up to a certain sign. N plus one plus N N plus one over two. Um, Okay, uh, so if you take in two Hochschild chains alpha and beta, their mu chi pairing is equal to the <coughs> integration of OC of alpha cut of C of beta with that sign. By the way. 
and here's an attempted picture of the proof. It's by the, the Cardi relation. So here's a picture of that formula that I wrote for the Mukai pairing. So there were two applications of A infinity structure maps, one with A naught on the left, one with B naught on the right. So here's A naught on the outside of a mu star, taking all inputs and then an output. Here's B naught on the inside of a mu star, taking all inputs and then an output, and then we connect these up to take the trace. So that picture that defines the uh, formula for the Mukai pairing is a degenerate annulus. It's equivalent to smoothing the annulus with some modulus fixed so that B0 and A0 are opposite to each other. And then you can think of the annulus as a cylinder and stretch it out until it has infinite length. And you get two applications of the open-closed map. One with one of the sets of Hochschild, one Hochschild chain as the input, and the other with the other Hochschild chain as input. And you take the intersection, which of course is quite gradual to uh, integration of that product. Now, a theorem due to Shikwaro that if the category is, well, it has to be proper for this new kind of pairing to find. If it's furthermore smooth, in the sense that the diagonal bimodule can be split generated by tensor products of the meta bimodules, then this new kind of pairing is non degenerate. So, if y is smooth, then its derived category, the core of y, is also smooth as a, in the sense of a infinity categories. Why is not smooth? Oh, really? Oh, okay. Thank you. I, 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 plug, I plug things from other people's papers in. Perfect complex is perfect complex. Okay, so forget I ever said that. Did you call Y? Smooth. So the mu chi pairing on Hochschild homology DB code is non degenerate by Schwarzkopf's result. As a corollary, x and y are homologically mirrored. The mu chi pairing and functional homology of the Fukaya category is also non degenerate. Since the Fukaya category is Morita equivalent to Divi. And since the mu chi pairing is a Morita invariant. So you can probably complete the argument yourself. Take any non zero alpha in functional homology, choose beta so that its Mukai pairing with alpha is non zero, and the formula I wrote, pi by two, uh, shows that this integration pairing is non zero, so OC of alpha must be non zero. So OC is also injective, since we already saw that it's surjective. That means it's an isomorphism. Um, okay, finally, closed open map, so earlier on, is dual to the open closed map, so that also is an isomorphism. So maybe since uh, I didn't time my slide talk all that well, and I still have plenty of time, maybe I'll. Uh, draw one final picture on the board.
So what we've seen is that CO gives us an algebra morphism, quantum cohomology to Hochschild cohomology. Hochschild homology is a module over Hochschild cohomology. And this map, OC in the other direction, is a homomorphism of QH modules where HH acquired its module structure via the map CO and via this module structure here. This was a module on. And it also respects pairings. <coughs> And I just want to complete the picture for you. We had an algebra homomorphism in tangential cohomology of Y up to Hochschild cohomology. In fact, an isomorphism. We also have one down to uh, the cohomology of differential forms on Y. Okay. This is a module over that one. And this is a module isomorphism. Let me also twist this one by square root of Todd class. And it also respects pairings. So this whole structure on this side was conjectured uh, by Calderaru. It was proved by uh, Markarian Ramados that indeed this map uh, takes the uh, new. Okay, I, I'm probably being a little bit lost and loose here. Really, I should say Hochschild homology of Y. But something that should be equivalent is proven by Markarian and Ramados that this takes the Mukai pairing here to what Calderaru defined as the Mukai pairing on this here, which is some twisted version of integration pairing. <coughs> and the other part of Calderaru's conjecture that this map is an algebra isomorphism and this map is a module isomorphism uh, was proven by Clark Vandenberg and Rossi. Uh, I only, before I only mentioned this part, which is the only part that went into it. I just wanted to put these two pictures on the board to show that we're basically finding the same structures on the A side as exist by Colbert's conjecture on the B side. Okay, stop.
the question? Are there examples of exact manifolds that fail to satisfy the non-degeneracy condition? For Weinstein manifolds, I guess it's they should always be non-degenerate by work of bourgeois, Ecole, and Deli Ashberg. Of oh, oh, so, so finite type. Ah, okay. So if you take yeah. Thank you.